Hello, my name is Mechagodzilla and today I am going to cover one of the crankiest anti-SJW videos ever. I really don't want to do this. But I promised an anti-SJW video and by god I am not going on hiatus. Or should I say hiatus? Let's just get this over with so I can go back to my dream of massacring a whole pack of Gorosauruses. Wow how much did that Discount Info Wars intro set you back? I bet some graphic designer has a gun to his head right now. I saw the movie opening night and I was more than impressed. It's got great action, good fun, laughs, a cool story, and most importantly, one of the best villains of all time, Thanos. Well I guess his video is over then. I'm going to pick up some swimsuits models and go to a beach. Okay girls time to have a splash fight. First things first, off with the swimsuits. Wait did you think I was being serious? Of course I wasn't going to get off that easy. Just like all anti-SJW channels, these people need something to get monetization for and not talk about real issues that adults talk about like pollution, deforestation, interventionism, corruption, gerrymandering and redlining, because apparently fat girls in pussy hats are the real threat to the world. Let's see what Professor Albright has to say about what is unquestioningly the best movie since Rogue One. Fortunately though, it's nothing nearly as bad as The Force Awakens, or the SJW fest that was The Last Jedi. Oh the Admiral has purple hair it's an SJW movie oh Rose Chico isn't a 10 and hates greedy people it must be an SJW movie oh Ray can translate her combat training to a lightsaber and bypass a compressor that she saw the portions guy install it must be an SJW movie. Shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. All of you. And Everett of course got that injury by jumping in front of Black Panther's bodyguard, saving her life by literally taking a fucking bullet for her. Everett nearly gave his life to save a Wakandan woman, but Shuri just jokingly calls him another broken white boy. She was joking, because she knew that he would be okay, she would be more serious, if he had Prince Nuada's spear in him or something. As for the white boy remark, it was a subtle reference to Bucky Barnes. Why didn't you just reprogram the synapses to work collectively? Because we didn't think of it. I'm sure you did your best. Okay, now I could see what they're going for here. Shuri is making this cute line and everyone's supposed to have a little laugh about it. Oh, that's funny, look how smart she is. But in actuality, Bruce Banner and Vision are supposed to be pretty fucking smart too. Banner is like one of the top scientists in the world, renowned for a study of gamma rays, which of course is what also turned him into the Hulk. And Vision, the one laying down there, he's like this futuristic half robot, half Asgardian super genius who knows everything, which of course makes him very fucking smart too. And then we got this Shuri chick coming along and schooling them all and being disrespectful. Bruce Banner is an expert in gamma rays, not synapses. Also Vision said in Civil War that he didn't know the nature of the Mind Stone, so why would he fuck around with it? And it also really reminds me a lot of Rey from the new Star Wars movies, in a lot of ways. Especially like this scene from The Force Awakens. Be pieces of us in three different systems. What'd you do? I bypassed the compressor. Both scenes have new female main characters showing up our old, favorite, white male characters. For absolutely no reason. For no reason! I already mentioned the compressor thing, but let me use an example of the same thing happening. In Star Trek the motion picture Captain Kirk is now an admiral and takes command of the Enterprise. In this time period, the Enterprise is so different than the one in the TV show that it might as well be a new ship. Just like, when Ankarplut modified the Millennium Falcon. Kirk almost gets the ship blown up and is showed up by the ship's new captain. Why was my phaser order countermanded? Sir, the Enterprise redesign increases phaser power by channeling it through the main engines. You saved the ship. I'm aware of that, sir. I guess Captain Decker isn't a Mary Sue, since he's a guy. Well, besides that, we hardly even see the Hulk in this movie. After he loses to Thanos, the Hulk refuses to come out for Banner, who is then stuck in his human form for almost the whole movie. And at face value, that might not seem like such a bad thing. It sounds like they're trying to mix things up a bit, but when you combine this with the disrespect from Shuri, well, it's starting to seem like the Hulk is a victim of the SJW agenda here. <laughs> In the after credit scene, we see Nick Fury reaching for a device to call for help. When he drops it, we see it's an older pager from the 90s, which has the logo for Captain Marvel on it. She's not only set up to be the first female lead in a Marvel movie, but it looks like they're making her into this rather strong and powerful superhero too. Quite possibly more powerful and stronger than all the Avengers. Oh gee, 
I wonder why. Maybe it's because she's powerful in the fucking comic books. And there's also Wanda, the Scarlet Witch who was in that fight scene, who's been moving up in the Avengers and seems to be becoming one of the more powerful ones. Just like the comics. Next, let's not forget about the next Marvel movie, Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is coming out later this summer. And it also sees Ant-Man being joined by his female crime-fighting partner. Just like the comics. Like that scene where Spider-Man references the movie Aliens, which of course is a female-led 80s movie. By the transitive property, it's SJW. Made by none other than the SJW Canadian director himself, James Cameron, who ironically enough was bitching about this Avengers movie a week ago, saying it was too male, no less. And it looks like Marvel has recognized that too, and that's why they're overcorrecting now. Marvel does not give a fuck about what James Cameron thinks. He is a has-been. And I think having midget, dwarf, little person representation is certainly something a radical leftist, pro-diversity, anti-ableist SJW would be all for. Or it could be, because Peter Dinklage is a good actor. Another SJW point some could argue would be with Vision, who's a half-robot, half-alien hybrid, who's also trying to transition into being human. Yep, uh-huh. Vision is a trans-human, if you think about it. Even trying to put on this fake, human form in some of the scenes. Yeah. Cause there has never been a robot that has wanted to be human before. You are so full of shit. There's also a big plot point where Shuri operates on Vision, trying to remove his infinity stone that's on his head. Does that sound familiar? Well, to me that sounds almost like a sex change operation. Oh mother. I forgot I fell asleep at your place. I just had a messed up dream where some guy was accusing Infinity War of pushing the SJW agenda and said removing the mind stone from Vision is an allegory to sex change operations. Actually, that is real. This is the dream. Fuck. But instead of removing his cock, Vision is getting his Infinity Stone removed. Okay, I am done. You are the most pathetic loser in this community. At least Chris Reagan is successful from being talentless and annoying, but you are such a bumbling idiot that seeing your videos in my sidebar makes me cringe. You make me want to rip out my own optics, and if you take this guy seriously, then you are a bigger loser than he is. Later, skaters.